Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Turner and I'm the assistant curator for the collection here at the Ackland. I'm very happy and grateful to be joined today by three amazing artists, Jason Woodbury, Marcus Kaiser, and Quentin Talley. All three of these men are helping us in terms of an upcoming festival that we'll be offering virtually because of the pandemic called Intergalactic Solstice. Intergalactic Solstice is an Afrofuturist arts festival that we'll be offering um, inspired and in conjunction with the commission that we've had in the museum on display since last August, created by Jason and Marcus. That commission is a work called Project Lax, which is this um, multimedia extravaganza that is an imagined Afrofuturist alphabet inspired by Henrietta Lacks, the woman whose um, immortal cell line helped to develop countless applications in medical technology, including the polio vaccine. But the commission features this alphabet against a stark black background and a glowing uh, neon uh, collection of spheres, I'll let you describe it better, that when you unlock it with augmented reality on your cell phone, unlocks further audiovisual content. Um, and this work ties in to this greater body of work that Marcus and Jason, with also assistance from Quentin on the um, music and performance side, have been developing for at least five years, if I recall correctly. And I like to tell people to think of intergalactic soul as sort of a multiverse experience in terms of visual arts and that they've been doing all sorts of aspects to tell a narrative of black astronauts in the future. And I wanted to do this as a primer since right now, unfortunately, People cannot go see the commission in the museum as we are still closed for the pandemic. And this seemed like a great opportunity to talk not just about that work of art, but the greater body that is intergalactic soul because it will be playing into this virtual festival that we'll be holding June 19th through 21st. And you can find more details on ackland.org. So I was gonna start with Jason Woodbury. Jason and Marcus are both, both based out of Charlotte and are joining us today from there. Jason, would you mind giving me sort of a description of how y'all came to developing Intergalactic Soul and a lot of the things that you're focusing on as you develop this multi-year project? Absolutely. Um, so uh, Intergalactic Soul, me and Marcus, uh, prior to doing Intergalactic Soul, me and Marcus were friends and um, we would draw, uh, do commissions at uh, comic book conventions, um, Heroes Con to be specific, but Mar Marcus had, had been to a lot more conventions than I had. Um, however, um, in doing so, you know, we, we both felt a uh, conviction to utilize our, our talents to um, address some things that we felt uh, were things that had been plagued in the community, um, things that need to be talked about, things that needed to be said, just utilizing our art as a tool um, and our understanding, we both have worked in marketing for a very long time and we understand how, um, how brands and products, how they, how they brand this message. So we wanted to utilize that knowledge as well to uh, create dialogue and create, um, create some conversation around these, uh, these social issues. Um, so uh, we created uh, two pieces from Intergalactic Soul um, they were featured in the 2014 Miami Art Basel. It was an exhibition called Cosmic Connections. And from there, uh, the collection Intergalactic Soul gave birth and we were able to debut it the following year at the Harvey Gantt Museum. Um, and from there, it's is, is grown. Um, in doing so, you know, it, it gave us the ability to again, create these dialogues, create these necessary conversations and utilize our talents and our love for comic books and, you know, and hip hop, all the things that really that, became, that are part of our culture, but part of who we are, you know, at the end of the day, me and Marcus, he'll tell you like, you know, we nerd out all the time around comics and things and such and video games. And um, we wanted to use this artwork to, uh, to again, create those conversations. So, 
um, moving forward, Intergalactic Soul has grown from, you know, two-dimensional illustrations, um, digital illustrations to, uh, you know, we have everything from product lines that we created like mock products. Uh, uh, Marcus has is, is created three-dimensional spaceships using 3D printing. Um, there's a lack text that was created using augmented reality. So we also try to encompass uh, these new technological tools and resources, you know, at, uh, at our leisure. Um, and, you know, and use those to find new ways in order to communicate this message. Um, so that, that has been sort of the, the scale of the galactic soul so far. And there's, there's more to come, of course. I think uh, one of the things that's important to know about your work is it's definitely seems to be something where you're approaching it where art is activism, which is mm -hmm. amazing. And I know that plays into what you sort of mentioned of why you choose to use so many forms of communication. I wondered if you could articulate that a bit more. Yeah, you know, um, uh, even I myself, I guess, it's, and, and, and Marcus can, can chime in on his own. Um, there was times in, you know, being younger, I wasn't really taken to the museum environment. You know, I, I walk in a museum and I would just see like, you know, kind of like these, you know, just paintings. And uh, I, you, you can't make the assumption that everybody's going to grasp onto that and want to know more. And like, you know, like I, I see my, I see paintings all the time. I see artwork all the time. And I'll feel some sort of way. And the person next to me is like, you know, they don't really have any interest in maybe the medium in itself. But there's always this, uh, th there, there is this, this uh, demographic of people who are drawn to technology. And um, being able to, utilize these things you know we see augmented reality and people are like oh that's cool you know me and marcus we see it and we're like that's a tool we can figure out how to incorporate this into something to where you can now interact with it more you know it's, it becomes an interactive piece but as well as like if this is what you're interested in this is something that you like then you know we got something we want you to see you know and and and, and again that that's the um that's been like sort of the beauty of being able to to do what we've done is is being able to look at these things um, and to utilize these things to continue like this this narrative um, of a much needed discussion. Thank you. Um, one of the things that we'll be offering during this intergalactic solstice virtual festival is that you and Marcus have kindly agreed to lead a comic book workshop that will be held on Zoom on June 21st at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. And Marcus, I was hoping you could walk us through what folks might be able to expect and if there are any materials they need to have at the ready for the workshop. Um, <clears throat> pretty much uh, what to expect is, you know, like the, the, the prior question to like what Jason was saying, um, this ability to jump from different mediums and different platforms so messages don't get lost. Um, because, you know, we have like these voices and I, I don't think like, I don't think that we should limit ourselves, especially as artists, to uh, to like just a few platforms to, to use as our voice. So um, using everything from product line to comic books, illustration to to music like Q's doing to like get your voice out and to get people to understand what we're doing. So with this comic book workshop, um, I wanted to, we wanted to kind of do a workshop where we're, um, it's kind of like this underlying theme of like educating people and kind of building people's self-esteem where they view themselves as like heroes to society. Um, and kind of like helping understand what their superpowers are as like real uh, individuals. And then we tie that in with the course, like fictional characters, and whatnot. So um, leading the comic book workshop, and I've done a couple of these. Uh, Jason and I did one with a, with a, a gang prevention program. Um, you're kind of just helping people look within themselves find like their, this self-esteem of like who they want to be or who they inspire to be. And then I take that and then we kind of like add like these simple drawing steps of them creating these um, alter ego, uh, um, alternate egos 
for themselves um, for the better. So like pretty much like with the workshop, um, it's going to be simple, um, just kind of like a one, two, three, simple drawing design thing and um, just helping people better themselves. So that's pretty much it. And it's not going to be hard. I'm going to try to keep it super simple. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. And um, I had mentioned briefly, but two characters that often appear within your intergalactic soul project are Astro and Pluto. These two young black astronauts that sort of go through the universe and, um, and you use their experiences to couch discussions of contemporary black experience. Will we be seeing any of Astro and Pluto in the comic workshop? Much, uh, I wasn't going to put them in the workshop. I was okay. going to keep it a little more open for people. So, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Would I didn't know if you wanted to talk a little bit just about their presence in the project broadly, because I know they may be appearing in some websites and ads and things like that. Um, sure. Like, did you want to go first, Jason? I think pretty much, so I pretty much created um, Pluto and Jason pretty much created Astro. And to me, I look at these, these two characters as, as embodiments of who we are, like our, like us as people, like me and Jason. So, you know, I can tell you about Pluto because, you know, we named him Pluto because, um, you know, Pluto is always, the, it's the furthest planet from the sun. Sometimes it's recognized as a real planet. Sometimes it's not, depending on what, <laughs> what mood, you know, astronomers want to be in during the year. Um, it's this cold, desolate planet that nobody knows much about. And I think I kind of just kind of created this, this character based off of like this young adolescent black kid and kind of just like people really don't know much about him. They kind of fear him, but at the same time, he's not a, he's not a victim. Um, and he's just kind of traveling the universe with his partner Astro trying to like figure these things out. And um, yeah, so I'll let Jason speak on Astro. So Astro um, aesthetically is modeled after my son. Um, I have, he's 11 now. He was much, much smaller when, when I created Astro. But um, you know, like Marcus said, you know, it was um, Astro has, is, a, is younger. Um, Marcus is older than me, by the way, so that makes sense. But Astro, uh, Astro being younger, he's sort of, a, I want to say, like oblivious to to what it is. He approached things from a very childlike perspective. Um, you know, it, there's no judgment, there's no preassumption or any type of real biasness. So as a child, he travels the universe and he he's approaching these things or he's seeing some of these things, a lot of these things for the first time, like the Jim Crow robots, you know, that's not something that he's seen before he's familiar with. Um, so he's learning how to uh, define friend or foe. He's learning about these imaginary lines that are, I don't say imaginary, but you know, these, these lines that are drawn between, you know, uh, these different type of categories of people, these classes of people or races of people. Um, and it's all metaphorically um, explained throughout the, uh, the intergalactic soul narrative. Thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. that. Um, I'm sorry to put y'all on the spot that way, but I think one of no. the things I've enjoyed most while getting to know you is just finding out how much you've constructed and filled out this universe <laughs> that so often when I've heard you talk just goes unsaid. And I wanted <laughs> people to really get to see like you've you have created an environment in your heads that I love it when you're inviting others to join you and that you use that for your sort of art as activism. Yeah, and, and to hop on that, that's the part that I forget about is that like, we have kind of created this elaborate universe and um, I forget that like, um, you can't see it all in a few pieces. Um, and it kind of plays out in me and Jason's head as a movie but like a lot, I forget that a lot of the viewers, when they're seeing it, like they don't recognize a lot of that stuff. But I think we've become better at like, and especially with Q tying in the music, I think it's become like, we've become stronger at like telling like that narrative 
of the whole uh, the whole project. Thank you so much. I was gonna see if I could get Quentin to say a few words because I know Quentin, you're you came into this project a little later, um, but you have been developing with Jason and Marcus a very robust and amazing spoken word and music performance to this intergalactic soul universe. We were able to host you and your soul providers at the museum this last fall and we'll be able to uh, stream you as part of a YouTube premiere this uh, June 20th at 8 p.m. I was hoping you could tell us a bit on how you got involved with this project and sort of what folks can expect to see during the YouTube premiere. Cool, so uh, I've been a part of the project for about four years now. Um, I've known Marcus for years um, and saw some of the artwork and I had a meeting with him and Jason and was just like, I love the project. I want to help out any way I can. Um, and I want to be a part of it. <laughs> so uh, when I saw the artwork, it just spoke to me and, you know, started coming up with narrative uh, to go along with the story. As Marcus and Jason said, you know, work, kind of working in comic book form um, to come up with the story. Um, and using music uh, to further that storyline. Um, so I'm happy to be a part of the project and uh, glad that they have me, have me a part of the project. Um, and like we've been working on music uh, for years with this um, and have finally gotten things kind of kind of down packed. We had a full run of the show back in February here in Charlotte um, at Blumenthal and it went really well. So we have the full show um, ready to go. So that's what you'll see uh, for the YouTube premiere is the full show laid out. Um, it's about a 75 minute performance um, and it'll take you through the world of Astro and Pluto. And we also have um, uh, a record dropping, a single from, from, the, from Intergalactic, so Humans Only that will also come out on uh, June the 20th as well. Oh, I'm so excited. That makes me so happy to hear. As yeah. someone who was very sad to miss the February performances, um, yeah. this delights me. I, was, I realized that because I do think it's important to acknowledge everyone who has a creative voice that for the sake of avoiding the Brady Bunch effect, we did not ask all of the soul providers to join us, but I didn't know yeah. if you wanted to give them a shout out because they certainly have been a valuable part. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so we have uh, Kurt Keys, who's our MD. Um, so Kurt, he, uh, and also Courtney Gibson is on bass. And then Stefan Collender is on guitar and Jesse Williams will be on drums. Um, and in the last performance, uh, we also had Tim Scott Jr. He was on drums, uh, Nero, he was on guitar at some points, and uh, Johnny Abraham was on keys. And Johnny, Johnny and Kurt actually helped produce uh, the record that'll be coming out uh, on June 20th. And, um... I realized I hadn't made it explicitly clear, but that June 19th to 21st is the combination of both the summer solstice, hence intergalactic solstice. So the planets are aligning for this beautiful yep. event. Yes. And also and June 19th, June 19th which yep. <laughs> is June 19th and celebrates the Emancipation Proclamation. So yes. we're really excited to be able to have this. The uh, other performer who had also does Afrofuturist work but is not direct, directly related to intergalactic soul is Terish Pipkins, who is a Jigetto and will be performing his Spinocchio, and that'll occur at 3.30 on June 19th. So everyone, please clear your calendars because there's going to be so many exciting things happening that weekend. And Jason, Marcus, and Quentin have all very kindly agreed to also be sort of engaged in question and answers and chat functions during their performance and workshop as well. So we're really appreciative of that. 
it's a chance for us to get people involved with artists, even though we can't physically be in the same room right now. So thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this. And I invite everyone to join us for Intergalactic Solstice, June 19th to 21st. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.